All right, so we're posted up in the office slash bedroom at the moment. This is where I spend many hours at that computer editing and tearing my hair out because the, <laughs> the computer is so sh But anyway, that's not what we're about today. We are about this lovely setup here, which I'll start off by saying this isn't a massively expensive setup, although it's obviously it accumulates some sort of value. I wouldn't say it's a basic setup, but it's a... Um, it's basically the minimum that I need really. So let's get into um, everything I use. So we'll start off by going through the cameras. And this is a Sony A7R 2 I was gonna get the Sony A7R 3 but it was about 800 pound more expensive and the difference between the AR2 and the AR3 wasn't, wasn't massive. So I thought I'd use that 800 pound to spend towards the lens but we'll go through those shortly anyway. So yeah, Sony A7R, I've got the battery grip on there as well which is something that I thought was gonna be a necessity because the thing is with these Sony cameras, if you look at this Canon camera here, and if you've used the Canon as well and a Sony, you'll understand what I'm talking about here. But a Canon just feels a lot more weighty. It just feels a lot more real. It feels, it basically feels like a proper camera when you're holding it. With these Sony ones, if I put my finger there, you can see how thin the body of the camera is. So it, it kind of feels a bit fragile. It's a little bit wobbly in your hand. So I thought I would put the battery grip on there and it does make it a little bit sturdier. So that's what I shoot my photos on. Absolutely loving it at the moment. And it is a weapon. Next we have another Sony. This one is predominantly used just for video stuff. I was shooting photos on this for quite a while and I have to say the photo quality on it was better than my Canon 6D. Obviously this is a little bit outdated now. The Canon 6D is quite an old camera but the Sony A7S 2 which is this camera here is um, again a little chest. It's a little weapon and yeah just use this for video. Shoots in 4K, shoots at 1080 at 120 frames per second. It's basically, it's exactly what I need. It also shoots it, it shoots in different profiles, flat profile, that sort of thing. So you can do some really nice color correction on your videos. I'm going to say it's my favorite camera because I can shoot video and photo on it at the same time, which is something that when I'm on a job, a lot of the time I'm actually shooting video and photo. So it's a little bit long having to switch back and forth between the two cameras when I know I can just shoot both photo and video on this, so it's really good. I put the lens on this as well because I just sort of give you a little bit of a better insight actually to what the camera looks like when it's um, when it's all loaded up. As you can probably tell, I've got a Canon lens on here at the moment which obviously doesn't fit straight onto a Sony. I've got a Metabones attached to this. is the Mark III, I believe. I paid about 300 quid for this. Um, it's pretty good, however, the autofocus when you're using the Canon lenses is absolutely shocking, so I haven't used autofocus on this camera. I'm going to say in about a year and a half because I've had this for about yeah about a year and a half now so yeah the uh, Metabones doesn't allow for very good autofocus so that's something to bear in mind if you are looking to do a similar sort of setup to this. The lens we have on here at the moment is the 16 to 35 2.8. I absolutely love this lens. I really wanted to find a lens that was super wide and super crisp and this was the answer. I bought this second hand for about £800 and it has done me very well. However it has seen better days. The lens is absolutely in perfect condition. It's no scratches, nothing like that. However, as you can probably tell, the reason why I'm not using a uh, lens cap on it is because I've got a horrible dent on the lip of the, uh, the lens, so I can't put a lens cap on it. This happened. Stupidly, I left my camera on the floor whilst I was shooting a car and it was a Maserati that ran over just the edge of it here. Luckily, it didn't damage the camera, it didn't damage the uh, the lens. So here, like I said uh, a minute ago, this is a Canon 6D. I have not used this in a little while. Um, this was my photo camera and my video camera before I, bo I bought both of these, but I had to switch over from um, Canon to Sony because Canon just doesn't cut it on the video stuff. You can't shoot in flat profile. You can't shoot a good frame rate in 1080. This is also, it's a bit outdated. So if, I imagine if you bought maybe a Canon 5D Mark IV or something like that, it probably does pack a little bit more of a punch nowadays. Thought I'd just change it so it doesn't look all too same. So yeah, the Canon 6D, um, it was originally my photo camera. I'd used this for maybe two years. I really, really liked it for that time. And then I started to notice that the quality was kind of letting down my work a little bit, especially on the video side. I mean, the, the difference between the Sony and this Canon has literally given my work a new lease of life. So that was the reason for why I stopped using the Canon, basically. So not a huge selection of lenses in comparison to other photographers who literally have like six to 10 uh, lenses, or usually majority of them. Are... I only have two primes here um, because again, funds, you know, a prime lens is anywhere between 
I'm going to say anywhere between 600 to uh, five grand. That's how much, this is how expensive camera gear is. But with having said that, you don't have to spend a lot of money to achieve great photos and great videos. I was thinking about doing a series of videos on YouTube, just shooting with shitty cameras, basically, with really, really cheap, basic cameras and seeing what I can produce for them. So if you want to see that sort of video, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to do it. This is Canon 85 1.4, Samyung 1.4 50mm, 24-105 f4, which is the basic kit lens that comes with the Canon. And then here I have an f4 70-200 Sony lens. So reel off through these. 85 mil, amazing for portraits, really good for shooting cars as well. Um, it's a prime, super, super crispy. Absolutely love this lens. I don't I don't use it a whole lot now because I've got a new 50 mil. When I got a 50 mil again, it was literally like, it was just it was just heavenly. Like 50 mil is without a doubt one of my favorite lenses as it is much like other photographers, it's their favorite lens as well. So yeah, Sam Young, little chest, really good. And I can use, because it's a Sony lens as well, I can use the autofocus on both of the Sonys and it's um, super crispy because it means I don't have to use the Metabones attacher. Anyway, that's that lens out of the way. 24 to 105 kit lens, Sony. I have to be honest, this lens really, really has done me a great deal of justice over the years. I've had this lens for, I'm gonna say four years now. It has been through the wars. I've dropped it, it's been laying on the floor, it's been in mud, it's been in dust, and it is still a little chest. There is a very, very slight scratch on the lens. Um, I did actually scratch this one really badly. I'll show you how. Yeah, I had to take that to Canon to get repaired, thankfully. Um, they did a decent job on it and they gave me a little bit of a discount because I've shot some stuff for Canon in the past. Um, but yeah, if you are looking for a robust, um, pretty diverse lens, I would I would honestly recommend purchasing one of these because they are so good. You've got that white, you've got a pretty good wide angle on it. 24mm is relatively wide, 105 is pretty zoomed. It's also got macro ca capabilities as well. So it is a little chest, this thing, and I do use it a lot with the Sony a7S um, because it is so versatile and it allows me to shoot um, either wide or long distance or macro all in one without having to change my lenses over. So my newest purchase for the lens setup has been this Sony 70-200 f4. I was gonna get the 2.8, but again, funds, you know, it was about another 800 pound more expensive and the differences aren't really worth that amount of money, I think. So yeah, this is, I basically needed a super long lens. If I'm shooting motorsports, if I'm shooting landscapes, I needed the long lens. I bought this before I went, I went out to Iceland and it was worth every penny. Some of the shots I got with this were absolutely fantastic. I'll stitch some of them in now. Yeah, 70 to 200, little chest. Um, that basically concludes the lens setup. So yeah, I've only got four lenses, but I mean, the stuff that I can shoot on them is everything I need for the moment anyway. Once I get my funds up, I'll probably start buying some more primes in that. But yeah, for the moment, we're doing good. Right, the next bit of equipment in my setup is the Ronin M. So I was looking for a camera stabilizer. I'd used one of these previously on um, rented equipment shoots, that sort of thing, and I really, really like it. Plus, when you're doing long sweeping shots, that sort of thing, it's incredibly hard to keep your camera steady. So I bought this. It was pretty expensive, it was about 1,200 quid. I'm a little bit on the fence with this product. So as you can tell, I mean, let's put a lens cap next to it so you can see. It is quite a hefty bit of equipment. I unfortunately have a pretty bad back. I've always had a bad back since uh, all the extreme sport days, kind of riding mountain bikes, BMX, snowboarding. I've fallen off them quite a lot of the time and I've hurt my back quite badly and I struggle with uh, holding heavy, heavy equipment. So this thing isn't absolutely amazing um, for me anyway. It's um, It does do it justice as keeping the footage pretty steady, but in terms of how fiddly it is, you have to spend a lot of time setting it up, lugging it around with you, especially when you've got a camera on here as well. I'm gonna say it weighs about seven or eight kilograms, I'm gonna say, so imagine you're kind of hunched over holding it. It's um, It's not the most comfortable thing, so. I'm probably gonna sell this in the near future. I've seen those little, are they called, I think they're called Fuitech, the little handheld ones. I think that's sort of the thing that I'm gonna go for. I'm hoping that I can just sell this off and use the funds from that just to 
to buy the uh, the little handheld thing, but yeah, a lot of people swear by using Ronin. So I can imagine if you've got a red camera or a black magic camera, something like that, which is pretty hefty. Yeah, they are they are sick. I can't I can't deny that they they're not sick. They are good, but for me, I just think it's just not really worth it. And um, I film a lot of my stuff handheld as well. I don't know if you've seen any of my cinematic videos in the past, but all those sweeping smooth shots, I've literally just used my hands to shoot them. So over the years, I've managed to get pretty skilled at using uh, my camera's handheld when I'm shooting video stuff, and I literally just put warp stabilizer on it when I'm in um, when I'm in post in Adobe Premiere, and it literally just it just sorts out any little bumps, any little kinks in the movement. It just makes it super super smooth. So majority of the time, if you're watching my videos, they're all shot handheld. But for the big sweeping shots, like if I've actually got to kind of walk around something that sort of thing, I do have to use that. But I probably will. Um, move to a little handheld one. So yeah, that basically concludes my equipment setup from both my photo and my video. Um, I thought it was. I think it. I think it was the right time to do this sort of video now that I've got my setup pretty dialed, you know. And it's something that's been asked of me for years and years. What camera I use, what lenses I use, all of that, blah 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 blah. But anyway, yeah, I'm pretty stoked to be back on doing some sort of photography videos on my channel. I've been doing a lot of car stuff, especially with building the E36, that sort of thing. You know, as an automotive photographer, it's, it's obviously important that you're a petrol head, so that's the reason why I do these sort of videos. But I really want to get back into shooting um, YouTube videos on my photography, videography, that sort of thing. I'm thinking probably doing a couple of behind the scenes uh, videos as well. Someone asked me the other day how um, if I could do a video on how I shoot a car So I'll see if I can borrow a nice car for a day and we'll go take it to a nice location And um, I'll basically shoot show you guys how to shoot um, Cars, but yeah, I think I think it's about time I get properly on the photography and videography videos on YouTube You know tutorials uh, behind the scenes that sort of thing just kind of giving you guys a bit of a better insight into how I work as a photographer, my style, that sort of thing. I'm a little bit different as a commercial photographer, but I think it kind of gives me that edge and it gives um, me a pretty distinct start. It gives quite a distinct style to my work as well, especially from the background where I picked up a camera. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm sorry if I've spoken too much. It's pretty hard to do these sort of YouTube videos and not talk a lot. But yeah, with that said, I uh, really appreciate you guys watching the video. If you're a photographer or a videographer, if you like the video, give me a comment, give me some feedback. Any constructive feedback would be good as well. I really appreciate it when I hear those sort of things. Any video suggestions as well, if you think I should go out and do some behind the scenes or, I mean... It could literally be any video suggestion to do with photography or videography. I want to hear it in the comments. So yeah, with that said, thanks for watching again, guys. And I'll catch you on the next video soon. So yeah, peace out.